it's hardly antique roadshow, is it? Maybe it's antique roadshow beekeeping style. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I've got this blooming wax dipping pot that I'm hopefully I'm going to sterilise me blooming super boxes in, and maybe my bee bases. You can't use any tin though, because if you've got tin on your lids, it gets a bit psycho because all the wax gets stuck behind the tin, and then it creates another problem. The plan is you have half paraffin and half micro wax, micro something or other. I don't know, I can go over there and read the bag so I can pronounce it properly in a minute. And then you've got to dip your supers in here for 10 minutes and that should kill off any diseases, like, and especially the AFB, because I think some of these are a bit suspicious. I'm not 100% sure what was going on with these secondhand boxes, but... So if you're, if you're a scab ass like me and you've bought some secondhand boxes and you can't get to the radiation plant, which is, you know, easy and ideal, you can wax dip them if you've got enough time. Whew, just as well as my trusty cameraman turned up and he can help me. But the major problem I've just discovered is that we haven't actually got a temperature gauge that will read over 150, because we've got to get this... I should make sure I say this right, but I might Google this if I got it wrong. I'm pretty sure we have to have the wax up to 180 degrees, above 160 and below 180, otherwise you set fire to yourself. But I'm going to shock all this audience out here, and my dear wife, check this shit out. I was in the supermarket and I thought I'll buy my own strainer. And I got out here, and this is even more ridiculous, this is how keen I am to stay out of trouble. I got this strainer out the ute, and have a look. Just wait a second, you won't believe it. <laughs> I've even bought two. Mind you, I think this one might melt. I reckon that was meant to be for straining, first straining on the honey. It's like a massive blowfly, isn't it? Anyway, I wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it, dearest wife. I didn't steal your strainer at all when you see this covered in shit in my shed. I actually went and bought it. Look, still got the tag on to prove it. <laughs> Unbelievable. And it says it's a soft grip. What bloody use that is, I don't know. But there you go. <laughs> oh, help, lad. It's a bit hectic, there's cars everywhere. All the hubbies are trying to tick the list off the fridge, I reckon. God, me, I'm just trying to cling bee boxes. G'day, how you going? How you going? I'm going all right, and yourself? Oh, yeah. Slowly but surely. That's, slowly. that's about how it is, isn't it? Not wrong, <laughs> I'm just wondering how good your eyes are, because I can't see nothing. Is it? Heck, that's been your fault. On there, can you read what it says, how far up it goes? So we're trying not to kill ourselves, which would be a surprise, wouldn't it? So this mm -hmm. here um, is suitable to, like, it's not going to be, it's not always going to be, like, at, at 100 and, or whatever you said. Yeah, yeah, roughly degrees. about. It's not always going to be, it's going to be, like. Well, it's hopefully it's going to sit around 160, 180-ish. Yep. That's the plan. Well, that should be all right. That should be all right. Well, because like, we, get, we get too far above that, we're in flames anyway. Yeah, I'm surprise me. So I've got this one here. Oh, I reckon that'll be fabulous. And two, and we'll get a couple of washers and a drill. Cool. And we'll be all good. Preferably stainless steel washers. I will run with that, because I reckon that pissy little washer does not look like it's going to survive my enthusiasm. Okay. Two more, two washer two either side washers. of them. I think we're going to drill a hole through our tank and put a pizza oven thing on there. Because check that shit out, it actually gets to the right temperature. I'm sure you smart people will have a better idea, but at least we might not burst into flames. <laughs> Drilling the hole when it's hot could be fun. <laughs> that looks That's that one. Beautiful. Two of them, I reckon. Yeah, we're not coming to pack it. Oh, sorry, you have the whole packet? Yeah, eight. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. awesome. We, we can screw shit up and we'll be right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, well, I think that'll work. Fit or replace most pizza oven thermometers. Not recommended for wax dipping. No, it doesn't say that at all. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm going to stick it on this side. Because I reckon I'll be working that way. Well, anyway, whichever way you put it, it wouldn't bloody matter. But being right-handed, I'd rather pull it out and sit the box there. That would feel better than that way. So we'll put the thermometer this side so we don't knock it too often. Being that our little pot's only a one-off, one-box wonder, that should work. And the gauge will be kind of about there, which will be roughly in the middle of what's going on. So that should be perfect. Even bought my own scraper. <laughs> <laughs> Things are looking up. I even got some stuff for the actual project. Like I said earlier, I've got a strainer now of my own. 
And I saw this long handled scraper off and I thought, hell, that might be all right for getting the extra wax off. I don't know whether I need to, but maybe it'll stop me getting quite so burnt with my little short ass blooming paint scraper, but she might be a bit sharp. But anyway, what does it say it's meant to be for? doesn't actually say what it, oh we've got extra blades don't lose the packet <laughs> well i figure you, if i'm going to use this funny jolly silicon muck we don't want a wax behind it so we'll make a bit of a cleared area then we're just going to drill a hole through here and we'll seal it off in the inside but i think before we do anything stupid i'm going to turn it off just in case the wax decides to escape if i screw up where i'm going to drill the hole otherwise this might be the end of it all. We'll all be up in flames. Otherwise, there might be a big molten mass of wax down my boot. Like they used to in the medieval days. They used to make a metal boot and pour wax in it. Oh, man. That would have bloody hurt, wouldn't it, really? Go on. <laughs> I wonder if it was beeswax they used to pour in their boots. What sort of wax would have they had back in the day? Ooh, all I know is it blooming would have hurt. Golly gosh, we're nice to each other, us humans, aren't we? The things we do... I think it'll be fine because we drill just above that wax because this box we're going to have to fill it up heaps more yet I reckon that'll be plenty because that box is going to still so we're going to have to fill it up a reason like that'll almost be in the middle of where it needs to be I mean that box is a little bit rickety dickety anyway hell I suppose if all else fails we can always weld the hole back up can't we just wondering whether that's too bloody big No, be perfect. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out when we drill the hole, won't we? I wonder if we should drill in something else first. How confident are you feeling? What? What have I got that I can drill a hole in? Oh, close. <laughs> oh, golly, John. Have to be inside too, isn't it? You silly man. <laughs> I reckon it's going to be just I diddle diddle. As long as we can, we better not have it too far down because I've got to be able to turn that screw. Mm -hmm. Right, this will be fun. Just wondering, do we need a measuring stick? Nah, fuck it, we'll be right. <laughs> if we pull this off, we could make an actual, another entrance, like down the bottom where we could drain all the shit out. What do you reckon? you got to love these battery drills. Once upon a time over here without any power, you'd have been here with a crank handle or you would have had to drag this back to the workshop. Now you can just bring the drill to the job. How bloody clever is that? <laughs> <laughs> you young people would never know that you couldn't, once upon a time, you couldn't do that. The joys of not having a file. But we don't want a rough edge there, that's all. I wonder if that's in Workshop 101. Probably not. <laughs> Not quite going to fit, is it? Okay, now, things not to do with a new drill. <laughs> now, sports fans, if you've gone in in your dad's shed and you've stole his drill and his blooming bit, don't do that. <laughs> You're just as likely to smash it off and then there'll be all sorts of excitement. And you'll say, that bloody bush bee man, he could do it. But there's years of practice involved with that bit of madness. I've had a whole lifetime of drills that are not the right size. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking here. I'm thinking we're going to have to bush this up a bit because otherwise it's, not, it's going to try and tighten against there, which we don't really want it to push against here. We want it to seal on the hole we've just created. So it's probably just as well we bought all these crazy ass washers that we... Oh, so we, there you go, we needed four, not two. So just as well it came in a packet of eight. So I reckon three of these with some gunk. That looks pretty good, except for the fact that that bottom washer is not quite right. I wonder if the one that came with it 
will slip over that lip. No, of course it doesn't. I don't suppose it matters. It'll square up, won't it? Seal up your wax dipping compartment. <laughs> Not lightly. Active ingredients. Hey, it's all good. It says if it's selly, it works. <laughs> God. I bet you there's a disclaimer in there somewhere about me. <laughs> oh, crap. I'm going to cut the jolly lid off. Oh, did you happen to bring a knife? Mm, no, because of course my pocket knife's gone astray somewhere. Oh, this is the outside bit, so it shouldn't get too much out here. So we'll put a bit around there, because that's how bloody clever we are, you see. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Where the clever is, is on the list, I don't know. I don't think we needed all that pot of stuff, but anyway, you can't buy a little tiny bit, can you? Oh dear, I think. that in there, look at that. Do you want it pointing out the right way? <laughs> Would you like to check for me? <laughs> right. Let's get rid of this muck all over our fingers. <laughs> Drop that down there into the hot wax, I'll be really happy with myself. Class. Do you remember doing that? You used to dip your hand in the wax a little bit at a time and then eventually you had a whole wax hand and the teacher would yell at you and tell you how wax was expensive. And of course you were highly concerned about that when you were a kid, weren't you? <laughs> anyway, we'll crank our fire back on. We might get to dip one box today if we're really lucky. Right, let's turn this sucker up now. You know the shit part about it is, I got some of this crap at home. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? How the hell are you meant to get that out of there so you can reuse it? We're melting some wax here and it started the rain, so I don't know what to do. I'm not sure wax and water are probably not the best combination. Hopefully it's not like a deep fryer when that woman bursts into flames when you put water in. Oh man! I don't think it was meant to rain. Goodness me. I suppose if we're gonna move it, if we're gonna do it before it gets any hotter or any heavier. Ah oh, John. I don't know. <laughs> I'll put it out here because just in case it decided to be stupid. If I tip that back, do you reckon you drag that hot thing out from underneath there? Whoa! <laughs> Was that your boot? <laughs> if I tilt it back and you put that hot. Ah, oh, freaking hell! <laughs> if I tilt it back again, I'll get you to put the hot plate back under there. <laughs> Believe it, we'll probably run out of gas for the way we're going, <laughs> won't we? <laughs> oh man, ridiculous! <laughs> How bloody weather forecasters! <laughs> you know what? It'll stop now as soon as we do that, won't it? Yeah, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Am I going to let that back down without burning myself? <laughs> it's a bit windy. <laughs> that is so black. Goodness me, I suppose it doesn't really matter though, does it? Once it gets hot. I guess when you're dipping dirty bee boxes, it's going to get a bit black, isn't it? <sighs> well, if you're silly enough to dip your wax pots, 
hang on. <laughs> if you're silly enough to decide to try to dip your beeswax yourself, that doesn't sound right. If you're silly enough to dip your supers yourself, you need to make a combination half and half of paraffin wax and micro paraffin wax or micro wax, which is a, apparently if you just use just straight paraffin wax, you can't bloody get the crap off your boxes. Whereas this stuff's got a lower melting point, so it will run back into the vat better. But I don't really know because I haven't done it yet. But so we will find out together as we go through this journey of pot dipping. Anyway, it looks snazzy with the temperature gauge on the side, <laughs> if nothing else. We'll find out if it leaks in a minute. Oh! I don't know, we might fuck shit up by being in the shed. <laughs> ah, that is not a pocket knife, you idiot. Just as well the lad comes prepared with his cute little pocket knife. I better not give him too much shit, I haven't got a knife, so it's good that he comes prepared. Mind you, I might have to help him sharpen the bloody thing. Gah! Struth, lad. Oh. Come on, go back together. Thank you very much for your kind donations. Right, now, we'll pop a box of this in, and a box of that in, and we'll find out where we are. Oh. Which way up's up? Yeah. Microcrobia wax, it says. Ah, I better borrow that again. Now, do I give you a shit about it? Struth. <laughs> right, yo. I would suggest you make sure you splash the big block away from yourself. A bit like when you throw a schnitzel in the deep fryer. Goodbye. I was clean, now I'm dirty, it said. Oh, we've got some, we've got the temperature gauge working at least. <laughs> and this one's just normal paraffin wax. It's been in the shed for a bit. Fuck, that's one big block anyway. <laughs> yeah. Tool. Right, yo, we'll sit back down again. Ten bucks says the wife will turn up before we get this even done. <laughs> hey, apparently, this stuff bursts into flames at about 220 degrees Celsius or Whatever that is, about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, maybe. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, things not to do. So that's why we've got our temperature gauge. And apparently, well, it says that you're meant to get it between 160 and 180 degrees Celsius to obviously kill the bacteria that we're trying to kill. So hence why we put our pizza warmer upper machine in there. I'm not sure what the boys did before to know how what it was. Perhaps they just got it smoking and just thought we'll just sit on the edge of that. But anyway. We've got ourselves all professional. <laughs> Didn't even leak, which is pretty cool. Just as well, we didn't do a time lapse of the whole melting exercise. We've been here for fucking hours. We were just hoping the gas bottle wasn't going to run out before we got the full thing up to temperature. Anyway, we're up to 150, which is the minimum. And we're both dying of heat exhaustion. The women are ringing us up, hoping we're not dead. But we're taking one for the team. And here we go. We're going to dip some boxes. We might not get a shitload done today. <laughs> it's got crazy hot. But we got that hot. We got the gauge working. We got a little bit of gas left. We've got a box. Hey, check this shit out. I got all modern and found a stopwatchy thing on my phone. So we'll pop the box in and hit the go button. Oh, I need the weight to drown it. <laughs> so we even got a... <laughs> Special drowning box machiney part. Right, oh yay. Let's try not to burn ourselves. <laughs> You're probably meant to have a leather apron on or something, I would think. Anyway, we're gonna just be cautious. Are we ready? Goodbye.
Oh, that's cool. It doesn't even sink anyway. And then you put your weight on. I wonder if it goes that way or the other way. Which way do it go? That way, maybe. Oh, look at that. It's just the right amount of weight, too. Fine body would think they'd made that look, wouldn't they? Ta-da! Well, push the go button. Otherwise, we'll be here for another hour. Start. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Whole 10 minutes has got to stay in there, so. This is probably a moment we can have a time lapse. And we're back. 10 minutes is a fucking long time when you're waiting, you know. <laughs> You wouldn't believe how long 10 minutes can take. <laughs> Just as well there's a fast forward button, otherwise you all would have gone off to make a ham sandwich. Oh, here we go. <laughs> stop the timer, stop the timer. Cool, and it even resets. Yeah, anyway, I guess that bit won't matter. It's like a boiling cesspit in here. I better hook it properly or I'm going to get in terrible trouble. Oh, and I assume you just sit it up there to dry. Is that the go or the other angle? Must go the other way around, I think. Right, shall we pop another one in? Well, the plan is to paint it hot so the wax is still absorbing into the wood and the paint can absorb with the wax. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a layer on the top. <laughs> and maybe that doesn't work that way. Which is the best way to do this? Something like that. <laughs> oh, come on. Behave your bloody self. <laughs> Don't drop that bloody thing in the pot. Pop it over here on the paintings. <gasps> Far out. It's actually reasonably hot. <laughs> so being that these have been painted already, I thought I'd get this scraper and just scrape off the extra paint. Well, obviously, not much point painting paint onto paint that's not cooking to nothing. And you want to paint the box when it's hot so as, it, as the wax is easing off and soaking into the wood, you can take some of the paint with it. And that's the same rule for new boxes as well. So if you're doing a new box, wax dipping them to give them a bit of longevity, you want to paint them straight away too with a bit of paint to let them soak in. Otherwise, you're going to end up with the wax as the layer and the paint they won't have nothing to stick to. I reckon if I was in boiling wax for 10 minutes, I'd be a bit hot. Nah, actually, I'd probably be dead, I reckon. Or freaking screaming anyway. Perhaps if you were to set this up in your own backyard, find a shady tree or perhaps put your stand in the shed. When we started this project, it was early in the morning and it wasn't that blooming hot here in the sun. Well, we weren't even in the sun. <laughs> we were in the shade. But anyway, I don't know. At this point in time, I just decided to use a prep four in one, which is just an oil based prep paint. I just figured, oh, well, that'll just be well, I don't know, I'm still making this shit up, but I just thought that would work. That's what I had in my shed. And then I'll put this on and then I'll do a couple of top coats and then we'll recommission these little boxes. This is where it always gets weird. I've got to go this way because I've got, I got the wrong hand motion otherwise. <laughs> Well, apart from an insanely long wait to boil some wax in the jolly thing, I think that's been highly successful. 
I reckon that's looking good. We'll get that undercoat on there and then I'm going to get some gap filler to finish off some of the other holes. And give them another coat of paint or two and next thing you know we'll have some new homes for some ladies. So anyway that's how you treat your AFB boxes if you haven't got a radiation plant next door to you.